Well, I'm Tracy Whitmire. I have been shooting a bow for three years now and I'm also a physical therapist so I am really in tune with getting as strong as possible for shooting my bow because I want to maximize lethality and um, maximize the ethical portion of hunting. Always been super conscious of it. When I started, I just remember the first buck that I shot with a bow. I was really heartbroken that I didn't make a shot that dropped the buck within seconds or a minute. Um, the buck had to suffer for about um, four hours before we got him down all the way. And um, it was a quartering away shot. And I am just totally convinced that if I was shooting a higher poundage bow, that it would have clipped his lung. Instead, I just got a liver. So um, poor thing had to suffer for a long time. But in any situation, I always think it's better to have a faster bow, a more strong bow, so that we can set ourselves up for a more ethical kill all the time. At the time, I was shooting a 47 pound bow. And over the past year, I have gotten up to 60 pounds and have aspirations to get up to a 65 pound bow in um, the next year. Uh, but first I wanna do my homework and um, always training at the gym and utilizing different techniques that I found to help pull my maximum bow all the time because I am really hitting up the, the higher range of my capability, whereas a lot of men might not be getting to their maximum pull all the time with that. The fact that she only did that in a year and you went from 47, you said you're a 60 now. Mm -hmm. There's hope for me yet. There's hope. <laughs> um, 60 bound bow coming for yeah. Brianna. <laughs> and I don't think we were filming yet, but I think that last point you made is I think the most critical that we talked about off camera was the fact that like for most men, they're very comfortable in what draw, which is typically like average, I'd say like 70 pounds or so for like your average aged male and that becomes comfortable to them. For most women, I feel like you're constantly at your max trying to improve to get more weight. And so I think that's just like a, I don't call it like a harder feat, I guess, we face every day trying to draw that like, it's not like what we're drawing is always easy because we're trying to increase. So it's just like a different, different wall you gotta face than like your average male who draws 70 pounds and that's pretty comfortable to them and they don't need to jump up. But for women, especially women with shorter draw lengths, you know, people would say like, why do you need the speed? Well, if you can't change your draw length and you can't change your arrow length and you know how heavy your arrow is, because then it goes even slower, the only thing you can increase is your weight. So if you can increase it, why not try? That's my opinion on it. All right. That didn't feel too yeah. bad, but see how many times I can actually do that. I mean, to me, it looks like you're utilizing really good muscles for yeah. that. I would say increasing your intra-abdominal pressure is mm -hmm. a big thing, which, um, <laughs> which she's going to explain right body now. Bodybuilding and lifting techniques. Mm -hmm. If you were to do your, the heaviest squat, the heaviest deadlift, the heaviest bench press, Mm -hmm. What does everyone do? One and done. I... That increase their intra-abdominal pressure by breathing in really deep and performing oh. a Valsalva maneuver. So you create that maneuver and so you stabilize your entire chest and your whole body. Mm -hmm. And so that creates a stable platform for your muscles to pull on. So mm -hmm. instead of, it's like... It's a lot of new words today. It's a, <laughs> it's a little bit into the weeds and uh -huh. forgive me because I am a PT and super yeah. nerdy about it. I've actually like researched archery art articles concerning this about different muscle groups mm -hmm. and how they perform during a draw cycle. Breathe in as big as you can okay. and hold it at the top while you draw. Okay. I feel like I took it less high, if that makes any sense, like less sky drawing. Did okay. it feel any easier? Yes, I would say it does for sure. Yes. I don't know. It, so it just creates a more stable platform. Just imagine if you were like wrenching on an object. What if you had a noodle wrench? Yeah. You like didn't, <laughs> you couldn't do yep. anything, but it, the more strong that core is during the draw cycle, the better result you'll have with the movement around it. I, that is like probably the most interesting tip I've ever heard. Cause you watch like a bajillion videos mm -hmm. and both like training, whether they're exercise videos or like actual with the bow videos, everyone focuses on like how to build the back, which we will do later, I'm sure, but like how to build the back muscles. 
but no like no one realizes you have all of these muscles that if you just utilize them within the shot like you have them there oh, for yeah. a reason but it's, no one talks about that it's mm -hmm. a lot of core yeah. and maybe i just thought about it because we are pulling our maximum bow draw cycles right mm -hmm. so we're trying to go maximum so why not employ what you do on maximum lifts so She's i go to the gym here. all the time so i'm <laughs> it's more natural to me so uh -huh. i was like hey what if i do this and I was like, oh my gosh, I can pull like, I felt like that was yeah, easier. Yeah, that's I can crazy. Controlled that way. Any other thing you could think of that like if you were here trying to just train with the bow that you utilize? Yeah, I mean, you've already done it a little bit of just coming up and over like this mm -hmm. to engage more a lot. For me, I don't like going from here to here just because I feel like it decreases my intra-abdominal pressure. So it gotcha. decreases that stable platform that can I can Can I watch using. you shoot one? Let sure. me let me do that here. So here. So, so I feel like you do it all with like there's no lean forward, but it's just straight down in front of you. Mm -hmm. You got that arm like not locked, but it's out there and the yep. work is all here. Yep, and when and I core. am pulling more maximum, because I am used to 60, I can mm -hmm. pull that way. So that would be more of an ideal shot for hunting. Mm -hmm. um, if I'm pushing the weight on the bow, say if I went to the bow shop and had them set up a 65 pound bow for me right now, yeah. I'll show you how I would have to draw to do that. So there's that slight come down with the bow, but it's not like an aggressive sky draw. Right, it would yeah. be it would be up and over, but not not so far over that I just feel like I'm I'm losing a little bit of power by doing an overstretch to the muscle. Mm -hmm. But having to come up and over, that's what I would have to do if I was shooting closer to the Which maximum. is what I have to do all of the time. Mm -hmm. Almost excessively. When I did turn brain. this up to 60 pounds five months ago, that's mm -hmm. That's what I was doing the whole time for sure. But so I, you added five pounds all at once? So um, I went from 47 to 50 and then I got the new limbs and uh -huh. then I got up to 58 and I could not draw 60. So I was shooting my bow at 58 and I could not do 60. And then over, I think I went on an elk hunt right after that and then I came back and I could only draw 58 and then two months later I could draw 60 and that was this past September so I went from barely being able to draw 60 to in October to now I, it's very comfortable right now and I did draw the SR in the shop several times at 66 last week so Dang. <laughs> <laughs> My rule is I won't really need a new bow if I, you know, I obviously need a new bow if I want to draw 70 because they don't make women's bows that um, that go that high. But my rule for myself is that I want to be able to draw 70 so I can drop it down to 65 comfortably and then yeah. build up from there. Yeah. Okay. If I want to shoot like a men's bow or any other option of bow, I have to get the poundage up uh, to give me the option because otherwise, like. I'm stuck at 50 pound limbs and not maxing out the efficiency of the bow. Hey, I think I hit an arrow or I hit something out there. I think we're there. stuck an arrow yeah. there. <laughs> Drawing the bow is fine at my, you know, 46 pounds, but this is the arm that tires out first, not the draw arm, which I don't know how to fix that other than sit there like hold a kettlebell in the air. There's but, that, but there's also a research article that covers that and uh, it goes see. over the exercise that um, is best suited for that. So we can go over that in the gym later. Yeah. All right, so we're here at the gym and wanted to emphasize that I am a physical therapist and I love all the exercises, but these are specific ones that I have found that work for me in order to increase my bow weight. My number one exercise for this is that it's the most mimics the exercise of drawing the bow is a one arm row bent over. So what you do is you hinge at the waist here, support your arm on the bench. And usually I use 70s, but for better right, technique. Right, she uses 70s. Well, go ahead and just lift it so your, your shoulder blade is fully engaged on this, so bring it from here, 
up to the side and down and up and a lot of people like to critique the technique on this one and mm -hmm. they like to draw it into their pocket yeah. which is a different way of doing it um, it engages your lat more if you do that and that's more of a bodybuilding technique yeah. but for me i want to lift as much weight as possible so i don't yeah. care what i look like i just want to do it so for me, going a little bit out to the side here engages uh -huh. more rhomboid and lat at the same time. And a rhomboid is a what? <laughs> a rhomboid is um, in the center of your back. So you have your shoulder blade here. Uh -huh. The rhomboids sit right in between the shoulder blades. Okay. So it's okay. in between the shoulder blades. I'm learning blades, a lot of things today. And then the lat comes down here. Okay. Bring it up. Good. Perfect. Yep. Just feeling it right in here. Good. Yeah, I feel like that if I were trying to reach like maximum strength, like mm -hmm. I would consider, I guess other, that sounds stupid, but light or like. And I doing a lower rep range of probably six to 12 reps. Uh huh. Um, this is a shorter range of motion movement, so you're not going to be working for that long a period of time anyway. Yeah. But I would keep it lower rep because we are emphasizing the strengthening portion. So lower rep, higher weight. Right. Yeah. If you go above that um, mm -hmm. rep range of, say, like 12, you're, you're getting into only hypertrophy and only growing of the muscles and not so much strength. So gotcha. you want to keep it a little bit lower for sure. Okay. So like if I were to do this on my own, I would probably increase that to something that like I can keep at the six range. And yeah. then honestly, how many you sets could probably like... go up to 50 because you're trying to draw. 50. Well, we're just going to walk over here and we're try, gonna try it. it. So, we're gonna see. <laughs> so this, this is, is actually a 60. Oh, nope. Just kidding. <laughs> um, my goal is to shoot 70. So Sometimes mm -hmm. my technique gets a little wonky by the end of my reps. Yeah. But my first reps are very solid, so I'm not crying about the last two looking yeah. a little yeah. forced. All right, well, we're going to see what happens with 50 then. How far away are we? Probably pretty far. <laughs> It'd oh, be God. pretty hard. But even if you only do four to six reps, that's that's the goal of being Open. able to generate more strength. For one, right? <laughs> For one. Let's try it. Oh, oh, God, Lord. Okay. Wow. And don't be afraid to use a little bit of momentum. Yeah. And the technique that I use Holy when I'm moly. when I'm trying to do a heavier weight on mm -hmm. that, I'll use a little bit of momentum at the top and then do a slow eccentric down. Okay. So a concentric is the harder portion of the movement and mm -hmm. eccentric is the lowering of the movement. So we'll, what I'll end up doing is concentric, do a little bit of momentum, uh -huh. and then slow and then guide lower. it down. Yep, and that one, the eccentric portion is good for strengthening as well if you if you can't quite get that weight yet. So do you start with it on the ground or do you let it hang when you I, start? I, I let it hang like after I start one. for sure. After you start? Yep. All right. Yep, good. I feel like that looks like absolute oh, dumb looks... shit. <laughs> Sorry, my curse words. It looks, like... it looks very hard, which is yes. the point. You want yeah. it to be hard or oh. it's not working. Yep. Right? So Woo. do about three sets uh -huh. um, of this. And then I would honestly start probably at 30. Yeah. Do three sets of 10. See how it feels the next day. You'll probably be sore yep. no matter what. And yep. then increase from there. Yep. I like that, you know, when you use a trainer, obviously Sorry. you focus on the like proper form. I'm not saying don't use proper form, but like you are you're trained for what bodybuilding a movement would be. So, you know, to know that like you're not killing yourself, that your form's not perfect, or you're not coming to the hip like what the trainer teaches, but it's still gonna work for you in archery, I think is key. I think we get over focused on is the form correct. Obviously you want it correct in your archery, but if you're just trying to build strength here, it's not gonna hurt you to be a little imperfect. Because I'm a nerd, uh huh. I researched an article about an archery's, um, what muscles they use during the draw cycle of a bow. Mm -hmm. um, and they use it doing electromyography, which is where they insert she is smart. electrodes wow. into your arm and it shows um, the muscle activation of each muscle. Engaged. And actually the muscle that gets to the closest to failure during the draw cycle on your draw arm is the biceps. Really? 
Yeah, so it's the biceps that is the limiting factor that of the pulling the weight. That is wild. All you which ever is, hear people say is engage the lat, engage the lat. Which the lat is needs to be the strongest. totally true because the lat is a much, much larger, larger muscle. muscle and it does contribute and the weaker the lat is, the more bicep you have to use. Mm -hmm. So you want to obviously train your lats. But for us right now today, the limiting factor is the biceps. Crazy. Okay. Yeah. So, so I'm going to guess this workout has to do with my biceps. So we're going to do some curling. Okay. And again, um, I like to emphasize like, hey, you might have to give yourself a little boost up, but then you go slow down. So okay. concentric boost up and slow down. So we're actually going to stand up and do it. Okay. So for here, so bring up and then slow down. Oh. And up. Yep. Bring up and slow down. And I honestly, I'm not aiming for more than six reps of this. What was that? Three right there? That was three. Yeah. Okay. And I might start to feel a little bit. Four. Let's note that she's doing double the amount of weight that I am right now. So if it looks like a struggle for her, that there's a reason for it. Yeah. <laughs> We're also talking to a bodybuilder physical <laughs> therapist right now. So I've done a competition or two. <laughs> for me, I'm not trying to physically grow my biceps. So it's mm -hmm. important to me to keep it extra low weight or low rep on this, That's extra. but extra <laughs> high weight. So yeah. I don't need to do a, a thousand reps of it. Mm -hmm. I just hit three sets of six and just make sure it's like, hey, this is really freaking hard and I don't yeah. need to necessarily do more than that. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. That, I mean, that's a very interesting one because, I mean, if I were to walk into the gym, even when I had a trainer, I was like, maybe I did biceps once a week. It wasn't like added into any sort of archery type workout like it right. helped build my strength for shooting so that's interesting to and add it's in, not like, aesthetically pleasing for a female to walk around with Popeye arms yeah. so yeah. I'm not really into building it but I'm just like I know like hey this is the thing that's gonna help me yeah. over that hump so mm -hmm. and anything that's gonna yep. help is worth doing right so for sure sweet didn't feel horrible on those at least like I did on the uh, the rows so that's a good thing but uh Definitely learning a lot here, so we're gonna go check out the next movement. Ready What's to go to the pull-up bar? Oh dear Jesus! <laughs> she is crazy. Yeah, here we go. What we're gonna do is a chin-up. So a chin-up really activates the biceps uh -huh. um, and the lat at the same time. So you're gonna be pulling with your lat and then your biceps here. Okay. So if you can't do a pull-up, which many mm -hmm. women can't. Um, yep. What you'll do is you hang on the chin up bar up like this, and then you'll slowly let down, gotcha. and then jump yourself up, and then slowly let down. You only got to do five, six reps of it to be effective. Okay. Um, or even if for you, if you're if you can't even do that, then hold as long as you can because that anything's gonna help. Super important for a chin up too is to make sure that you're engaging your lats the appropriate way, which a lot of archery forums talk about. Engage your lats, engage your lats, which what um, to begin the movement, um, I'll show you. I have really um, prominent shoulder blades to be able to demonstrate this. So you come from a dead hang and it, engaging your lats fully, you go from dead hang and then pull yourself up as much as possible without bending your elbows. Ah. And a lot of people call that a step pull up. It's really used in physical therapy. So coming from here, to here. I did these with my try. I just did that though. That's all we mm -hmm. did. Like so, going from here to here, and then one of my favorite exercises to help the draw weight is to do a full chin up. So going all the way up like here, and it engages a lot of bicep. But while while you're doing it, you're also ensuring to keep that lat engagement the whole time and not curling over like this. Oh, yeah. you can't quite do a pull up yet. Another um, way to do it is just to jump up into the pull-up position from here. Just jump up here and then slowly let yourself down. Jump up and slowly let yourself down. They make bands for it too to be able to do the full range of motion, but getting it a good in, like again, six to 12 reps of 
that level of exercise engages the lats and the biceps at the same time so that mm -hmm. when we pull our bow, we're not limited by that. Always keep in mind consistency always beats intensity. So the more consistent you are over years and years and years, okay. it's going to outweigh intensity. Like you get motivated for a couple months, you like train really hard, that will be erased if you get an injury. So yeah. keep yourself healthy, mm -hmm. make sure you're doing the right technique, make sure that you're taking care of your body to doing all the rest days and don't do the exercise that aggravate the condition yeah. that you have and try to take care of it right away. You either put yourself in pain or the pain will choose you. So it's your choice. Yeah. Either, you know, do the workouts or the pain's gonna find you some way. You're gonna have some kind of ache or pain creep up on you. I feel like I would be that patient she would have that she would like wanna punch in sessions because I come in and I've done none of the things that she's told me <laughs> to do at home. And then I come back in and I say, my pain is still there. And she asked me, did I do any of it at home? And I say, no, and she said, well, that's your problem. <laughs> so uh, I would probably not be her best patient. <laughs> Another great exercise, again, activates the biceps, but also really important to work your rear delts because that is engaged with the pulling movement and also engaged when you're holding your bow out here. That muscle is activated a lot during um, the bow holding out and then also the long head of your triceps okay so we do want to work out the triceps for the bow arm and then the posterior delt for both the bow arm and the draw arm so this one is a lot for the posterior delt and um, also helps the biceps at the same time so just call it a face pull so you pull it to your face make yep. sure you don't compensate with your upper traps that's a common okay. mistake so coming from here to here pull all the way to your face here keeping your shoulders down down yep to here I'll give that a try okay that uh, should be a good weight that it should yeah okay so all right and you're putting uh that doesn't feel okay shoulders down. shoulders down yep, yep there they were they were there they were go. up in the air good you can tell she does archery because she has really good shoulder control not a whole lot of people right off the bat just know to keep their shoulders down because she knows how to engage her lats. That's like when you start to get tired shooting, you immediately feel it that like your back shoulder, your front shoulder is riding mm -hmm. up when you're shooting and uh, you try to roll it back down. Mm -hmm. I think it, like archery makes you more aware of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's not bad. Good. Okay. And that's the rear Delt we're working. Delt. That's how yep. both arms, mm -hmm. the draw and the. And eventually, you'll feel a little bit in your biceps as you get more fatigued. Mm -hmm. so and is that, that one you need to? Again, are all these based on like that strength? You know, mm -hmm. as heavy as you kind of can. This one, I actually keep it about medium because it's okay. it's pretty hard to go really heavy on this. It's mm -hmm. kind of ridiculous, honestly, to go really heavy on yeah. this one. Um, but I like it to be more of an endurance base um, to where I'm working about a working set 30 to 45 seconds. Which is seconds. what that holding arm really yep, needs so to be Yep, so your holding arm needs more endurance base. So say, hey, I'm gonna do 10 to 20 reps. Mm -hmm. Rep range honestly like starts to not matter as much as you get into higher reps. It's more of pushing the failure. So as long as you're saying, hey, that last two reps, one two reps was super hard. Yeah. That's the good range to be in for that weight. Gotcha, okay. Yep, there's different ways to work the triceps, but the one that works the lateral head of the triceps the best, the outer edge, um, is just going to be a tricep push down. So you can either use the rope or a bar, and you're just doing a tricep push down here, like here. Making sure to not compensate, you want to get good form, keeping a good stature here, and coming down. I don't know about 50 for tricep push downs. <laughs> Keep it a little. Okay. Yep. And then you come, I wasn't watching, do you come to the halfway point for stopping yep. or all the way? It honestly, it, it it's potato potato at okay. that point. I like having a little bit fuller range of motion, but you're not wrong by coming only up to your elbows. There. Yeah, that's not like the the training I've had in me says, you know, they always say stop and then, you know. Mm. 
I mean, for me, I love all the techniques. Again, I said it before, I'll say it again. All the exercises are good. I love all the exercises. Everything's gonna help. And I would even argue if you started squatting with weight on your back, heavy squats, that would increase your bow draw weight. Really? Because what do you also do? I feel like this is what I've never heard before. It's, it's one of those concepts like, hey, what do you do when you put a heavy load on your back? Yeah. And that whole bracing power, that, that abdominal, yeah. the core strength that you get from that, that's gonna help you brace for a longer period of time. It's gonna help you build that yeah. endurance for holding it there. So yep. that's so intro that again, like things you just never I guess you just I never think to relate core to archery. And it's a major point. Even if you wanna hold your shot for like a long or significant amount of time core is going to be important in that. That's wild. And speaking of core, the real last exercise I have uh -huh. is actually a plank exercise. Um, yes, planks. So All right, something I can do. <laughs> roll to a mat over here. So last thing um, actually isn't specifically for increasing draw weight, but in order to decrease the tremor when you're holding your bow out. Um, again, I'm a nerd. I did the research online and um, found an article discussing this and the exercise they use to improve that tremor does involve the core. It also involves the arm. So it's going to be actually just a simple side plank where you're holding your arm here and just holding that plank position. And being able to hold this position for a long period of time is going to engage the core a lot and then also develop the endurance that we're looking for in that standing arm. So Brianna will probably love this one. I do love a plank. This is the one thing I can do well she on my PRT. We love the planks. <laughs> I love the planks. What was I doing? This arm's just chilling. Yes. Just Wave it around. Out. Hey guys, we love planks. We love side planks. See that tremor right yep. there? Yep, there she is. So this is again getting into the specificity of what we're doing. So for this mm -hmm. arm, we're obviously trying to pull as much weight as possible, but for the other arm, we want to be specific, right? So we want to go with the endurance on that side. So we're pressing in as long as we can, making sure we want it to tremor when we're training so that when we go through our bow, it doesn't tremor. So the more we train, the less we tremor. And so it should translate to that bow skill pretty well. Another one that I would have never thought of, but I mean, you're in the exact position of holding your bow, mm -hmm. except now you're holding your entire body's weight, yep. your upper body's weight. And putting the pressure up, the up through the arm too. Just far yep. more than you're holding your mm -hmm. five pounds in your bow. So right. you should see a significant change, I would think. That's a good one. Thanks for all oh, of this, because yeah. um, James knows I need to get back to the gym if I am going to fill my app, words, my elf tag that I just drew. So we got, yes. This oh, one. Yeah, yeah uh, I just found out today. I checked online. I thought I didn't. Congratulations. Draw, I did. Yeah. So uh, I have some work to put in in the next six months if I am going to make sure that I can make a lethal, ethical, and efficient shot. So. And um, then pack it out. Yeah, that's. I <laughs> 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 just said that today. <laughs> Which is a whole other uh, game. <laughs> uh, yeah, he was like, you're not packing out. Well, he said it might take me 50 trips, but <laughs> I will pack it out. So. Yeah, uh, we're gonna put these to work when I go back to the gym um, consistently, consistently. So thanks for teaching us this. Yeah, and my pleasure. Like, subscribe, and we will see you in the next video. Bye. Wow, deputy, deputy.